the mole. Section 3.7 or 3-7. This is a very tough aspect of this class. We'll work on it. We'll get through it. You can do it. I know you can do it. Keep telling yourself that. Wake up in the morning and say, I can do this. I can knock chemistry out of the park. I know you can. All right. A counting unit. That's what a mole is. It's the same way that a dozen is a counting unit. So a dozen is, it has a, def, a definition. A dozen calculators. If, you, if I said that, you'd say, oh, well, you got 12 calculators. The mole is the same thing. It is representative of Avogadro's number. A mole is 6.02 times 10 to the 23rd of something. Now, that's something that takes a lot to wrap your mind around because of the sheer magnitude of that number. The way I like to think about it is I like to think about something that's tangible. I like to say, like, if I had one mole of calculators, I would have 6.02 times 10 to the 23rd calculators. I'd probably be in the Guinness Book of World Records. I'd probably be able to retire. I'd be the cap or I'd be the calculator kingpin of the world because I would have so many calculators. Just try to stretch or just try to wrap your mind around that. And you know, from time to time, write out the entire number. 6.02, 6.022 times 10 to the 23rd. I'll use 22 and 0.02 interchangeably. But Really, you only kind of need 6.02. But write that number out using scientific notation and then write it out long form. What that means is you're going to move this decimal place 23 times. 602, 2, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, And it just goes on and on and on. And then it stops when you move the decimal place 23 times to the right. So that's a huge number. That's a massive number. So I think that's part of the thing that is is tricky just by virtue of like the magnitude of it okay converting between moles and formula units a mole contains avogadro's number of formula units one mole is equal to 6.022 times 10 to the 23rd formula units what you can do is you can take the number of moles multiply it by the number of formula units and get that number of formula units and we'll see an example of that right now so how many moles of helium are in a party balloon that contains 2.74 times 10 to the 23rd helium units? Okay, now one thing that you can do with this number is you can compare it 2.74 times 10 to the 23rd. Okay, and what I always like to do is I like to do a little exercise. 6.02 times 10 to the 23rd versus 2.74 times 10 to the 23rd. For just a moment, scribble out that exponent. Is the number that I've indicated with A larger than or smaller than B? Is 2.74 less than, equal to, or greater than 6.02? 2.74 is less than. So keep that in mind whenever you do this sort of calculation and say, oh, okay, well, if I only have 2.74 times 10 to the 23rd, I have less than 6.02 times 10 to the 23rd. Therefore, I have less than one mole. Now, Let's go ahead and solve this though. How many moles of helium are in a party balloon that contains 2.74 times 10 to the 23rd helium atoms? So what I wanna do is I wanna go ahead and say 2.74 times 10 to the 23rd. And then I wanna set up my conversion factor, 6.02 times 10 to the 23rd. Uh, this is helium, helium is one mole of helium. I expect my number is going to be less than one. So what I'm gonna do is I'm going to plug it into my phone. I don't know how to do that. I'm gonna plug it into my calculator here. 2.74 times 10 to the 
And heck, for this, I could skip the exponent, but I'm going to include the exponent just for the extra practice. 2.74 times 10 to the 23rd divided by parentheses 6.02 times 10 to the 23rd close parentheses equals 0 0.455 moles of HE. Okay. So I have 0.455 moles of helium. That is less than one mole of helium. And I knew that was going to be less, which is great. So I kind of predicted it, not very precisely, but I, I gave myself more or less or equal to, and I came up with less than, and I kind of affirmed that. Okay. Now, moles of a compound, or moles of atoms in a compound, you can do those same sorts of calculations, like right here. How many moles of each element are in four moles of CCl4. You have four moles of this compound CCl4. Let's think about if you have one mole of molecules of CCl4, and then let's take that a step further and say, well, if you have one molecule of CCl4, what do you have? Well, if you have one molecule of CCl4, you've got one carbon, and you've got four Cl. Okay, so then if you have one mole of CCl4, then you have one mole of carbon, and one mole, or I'm sorry, and then four moles of Cl. Okay, the way that I always like to think about this is or this sort of problem is I like to say if you have one car that car has one I'm not really a car person so I'll be very general it has one body and it has four wheels so if you have one mole of cars you have one mole of car bodies and then four moles of um, wheels Okay, so now I'm going to set this up as a dimensional analysis problem. I'm going to say 4.0 mole of CCl4. One mole of CCl4 has four mole of Cl. 4.0 mole CCl4, one mole CCl4 for one mole of carbon. So I've got 16 mole of Cl, and four mole of, sorry, that's Cl and C. Okay. So once you know the number of moles of each element, you can multiply that by Avogadro's number to determine the number of atoms of each element present. And that's what we're going to follow this up with right here. How many iron and sulfur atoms are in a nugget containing 0 0.25 moles of FeS2? Okay, so I'm going to set this up in two ways. 0 0.25 mole FeS2. One mole of FeS2 has one mole of Fe, or oopsies, of, it has two moles of S. One mole of Fe S2 has one mole of Fe. Okay, now I'm going to wrap this one up, this iron calculation. One mole of Fe has 6.02 times 10 to the 23rd Fe atoms. 0.25 times 6.02 times 10 to the 23rd, 0.25 times 10 to the 
times 6.02 times 10 to the 23rd equals, that means there are 1.51 times 10 to the 23rd Fe atoms in 0.25 moles of FeS2. And the last of this other calculation, one mole of S has 6.02 times 10 to the 23rd S atoms. 0.25 times 2 times 6.02 times 10 to the 23rd equals 3.01 times 10 to the 23rd S atoms. Now you might look at these numbers and say, oh, that looks like it's a, a 2 to 1 ratio of sulfur atoms to iron atoms. Well, let's look at our formula. FeS2, that's exactly right. It is a 2 to 1 ratio of sulfur atoms to iron atoms. These calculations are kind of tricky. Remember your fundamentals. Remember your conversion factors and remember how to set up a dimensional analysis problem. Because at its heart, that's what we're doing. And along the way, be sure to be asking yourself, if I stop now, what would I be solving for? So if we take this one at the top, this iron calculation, I'm gonna highlight it as I move along. We first wrote out what we knew, 0.25 moles of FES2. That's what we were told. Then we said, if we have one mole of FES2, we would have one mole of Fe, because we were solving for Fe. Now, if we had one mole of Fe atoms, well, we would have 6.02 times 10 to the 23rd Fe atoms. Now, as you can see here, there are some things that I omitted. For instance, I didn't write atoms. It's kind of implied, or it's going to be implied whenever you're writing in this manner. So that brought me to 6.02 times 10 to the 23rd Fe atoms, and that was a lot what allowed me to solve this right here, that I had 1.51 times 10 to the 23rd iron atoms. I did the exact same thing for the sulfur calculation, and you bet you there are going to be calculations like this on, on your quizzes and exams. All right, everybody. I hope this helped. Let me know if you've got any questions. Thank you very much.